Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. I'm Mickey. And in studio with us, we have Gavin. And Gavin, if somebody needed to get a hold of us, what would they need to do? For math homework, help call in Bakersfield, 636-4357. Everywhere else, 1-866-636-6284. Email dothemath at kern.org. We're online at dothemathonline.net and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, nicely done. So Gavin, where do you go to school and what grade are you in? I'm a, I go to Loudoun Elementary and I'm in fourth, fourth grade. How's fourth grade going this year? Good. Good? Not great though? Yeah. No. Uh, what would make it great? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, are you guys able to go back to school yet? Yeah, we are, but I choose to stay. Oh good, so you're doing it virtually just like you have been all year. So are you getting pretty comfortable doing it virtually on the computer? Yes, when it first started I wasn't that. I, I, I don't think any kids were comfortable when it first started, but as it's going you're getting a little more comfortable with it, used to it, and do pretty yeah. well with it? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been at Loudoun? For ever since kindergarten. Oh, so you've been there a long time. All right. Next year, I think you guys are going to have opportunities. I think it's fifth grade where you can get into band and chorus and athletics and things like that. Are you looking forward to any of those things next year in fifth grade? I think I might do like one, like can't, I don't, like track or something. Oh, okay. So you like to run? Yeah. There you go. Well, you know what? I know that you'll have track next year. That's something that I know that fifth and sixth graders also participate in. So, nice to have you on set with us today. Are you ready to do a little bit of math? Uh-huh. All right. Well, hold on to your heels there, son, because first, we have to take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, so today's math in the news literally ripped right out of the newspaper. Didn't even make it neat, just kind of ripped it right out of there. It'll so do the this, job. <laughs> this is exactly what Do the Math is made for. This is our 20th season of helping students with their math homework in Kern County and basically all over the place because we have had phone calls from uh, different states throughout the United States and this is our 20th season doing this and we're kind of getting the hang of it a little bit right now. But this article talks exactly about what we are here for. The first sentence, few things are more stressful for many parents than helping their kids with math. That's how this article starts off with. That is why Do the Math was started. Two national testing programs have shown widespread declines in math performance among elementary and middle school students which they ascribe to remote and hybrid learning. The stakes for, fail, for falling behind are greater in math than in other subjects because each skill builds on the next. If you have a knowledge gap in fractions, you can't solve linear equations. And I believe you're working in fractions right now, right? Yep. So in fourth grade, that's why it's important to get that base of fractions. Otherwise, things are gonna be more difficult as you go down the road. There was a survey of 2,000 parents found 56% felt hopeless when trying to help their kids with math homework during remote learning. So 
the author says, uh, I know I have, other than when baking, I really don't think about fractions. So when I had to help my fifth grader figure out how to divide fractions by whole numbers, I needed a refresher. Just like what we were talking about yesterday, the expert blind spot. You may know how to do something, and it comes naturally to you, second nature. You think, oh, all right, well, I need uh, three-fourths of this, but I'm going to double it, so this is what I need now. But in order to transfer that knowledge and help somebody else learn it for the first time, it takes a little bit of extra help and patience along the way. So it says, many parents struggle to help their kids with math because students are being taught how to solve problems differently from how they were instructed. Uh, reason is that they might be able to solve certain problems in their heads, and it takes a little bit of extra patience, and they're wondering, well, how do I explain it to my kid so that they can understand it easier? So that's why Do the Math was started 20 years ago. Uh, there's always new adoptions and curriculum coming out in mathematics and new ways to teach things, and over the years, we have shown, I think, probably 85 different ways to multiply numbers there are numerous ways to solve a lot of problems. Students, we want them to be able to see as many different ways as they can, and they can then take that information and use it the best and apply it the one that they feel most comfortable with. There is no right way to multiply numbers. As long as they find the way that is comfortable for them and it makes sense and they can apply it, that's what's important. So that's why Do the Math is here. And we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. But you know what? You're here on a special day because today is the last show for live broadcasting for 2020 and 2021. So this March 24th, 2021 is the final day of live broadcasting for Do The Math. We will be back again in September when school starts up. But a lot of kids have a lot of activities and stuff going on and so does Do The Math. So. Anyway, that is today's Math in the News. Just a, uh, it was just funny that this came out today and it was our final day and that's exactly what Do the Math is here for. So, phone numbers are on your screen periodically throughout the program. We did have an opportunity to go to visit the Boys and Girls Club recently of Kern County and we'll check in right now and see some of the new things they're up to. Hey, thanks, Mike. We are at the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, what a better place to be here in Kern County. There's so much amazing stuff going on. I'm learning as we go, but I want to make sure you know what's going on as well. So I brought my friend Joe Burdick to tell us a little bit about what you do here. And uh, even in our preliminary conversation, I am overwhelmed with the opportunities that young people have to do here. What is your job here at the Boys and Girls Club? Uh, my job here is the music director and uh, co-director of Music Fusion, and I'm also a co-director of the summer theater uh, musical programs. I work with Frank Sierra. He's, yeah. a, he's my cohort in crime. And uh, we work throughout the year with Music Fusion. This is a small group of kids who perform throughout the community and have actually traveled nationally to perform. Um, community service and to just kind of help inspire everybody who works for the clubs. They like to sing inspirational music and we love getting to work with them. And then each throughout the year we put on uh, workshops where kids have the opportunity to come and meet with us over Zoom right now. Yeah, um, of course, that's kind of the way it's going Fingers right crossed, now. right? Fingers <laughs> crossed we'll be face to face soon. Yeah. Uh, but yes, meeting over Zoom and we, Zoom and we work on music, they work on solos and we also work on group numbers. They learn their harmonies at home, they learn their choreography at home. They all come here, they have individual recording sessions, they get to have a really professional experience with Logic Films, which is who we work with. Yeah. They're an amazing local company. They and really are an amazing here. company and they do some amazing things here in the community, right? Yes. With local people. With local people. Yeah. Yes, it's very exciting and the kids get a professional recording experience. and. They come, they record their vocals, they dance, they sing, and then um, they get to see, about a month down the road, they get to see a final product of all of their hard work culminating together in an amazing performance that they're going to be able to have for the rest of their lives. So that's really exciting. That is super cool. Yes. And so there's certainly nothing wrong with a, a low budget production thing about getting people started, but you really do it, you're going all out for these young people so they can see a professional product. That sounds really, really neat. Well, Where do they do this? It sounds like <laughs> this little room back here, they've got um, some cool stuff actually, going on. Actually, we do, we do workshops here at the club. Okay. We have done workshops at, in local theaters uh, um, as well. And uh, we also are co-directors of the summer program, which okay. um, puts on musical theater. Yeah. 
Um, and last year, we were able to, with uh, the help of Logic Films, put on two full uh, musical productions. Oh, nice. In, uh, in a physically distanced <laughs> setting over Zoom. Right. Um, we were able to put on The Little Mermaid and Footloose. And one of those was here at the club with the green screen. Yeah. And one of those we got to perform at the Empty Space Theater. So we just kind of go wherever the wind takes us. And we love to reach out. Um, to connect with other local theaters because um, everyone's just excited to, yeah. I mean, we might be physically distanced, like I yeah. said, but we're socially connected through That's this right. program. And it sounds like a lot of support from the community, too. Like you have other resources yes. to draw from people yes. who really want to support what's going on, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're so super blessed. cool. Yes. Can you take us in this room? Because I'm so curious about what goes on back here. It looks <laughs> like part of the program, and it looks yes. like, uh, again, another professionally done part of what you do, right? Yes, well, this is our recording studio. Nice. Um, we have actually, gosh, the first time we were in here recording uh, was, oh, gosh, nine, ten years ago. So yeah. we have spent a lot of time in here recording <laughs> vocals, recording videos. You can actually see this room featured currently in the latest Music Fusion video that is, um, it's just been released. It's um, an audition video to be a part of the oh. national conference where people from across the United States get to see and interact with the kids through their video and through their song. Right. Um, so yes, it's very exciting. Um, a lot of memories in this room and Heck a lot yeah. of music. No <laughs> doubt. Music. Oh my gosh. So probably one of the most important questions I can ask you today is how would a young person get involved in the theater part or the music part or any kind of fine arts aspect that you mm -hmm. have here at Boys and Girls Club? How would they do that? So currently, we are accepting enrollment for our summer uh, summer theater musical program. Glad we're really, we're really excited right. about it. Yep. We actually offer two sessions. Okay. Um, we are going to have a morning session for ages 6 through 19, and mm -hmm. we'll be doing Annie, which is super exciting. Everybody, nice. I don't know anybody who doesn't like Annie. We <laughs> love Annie. Right. Um, that will begin June 14th and go all the way through July 9th. Yeah. And they meet Monday through Friday from 9 o'clock to 11.30. We, and I have a, we have a second session, will be a teen workshop. Oh, good deal. Um, that also starts June 14th. That will go all the way through July 24th. We'll meet, be meeting Monday through Thursday, so only four days a week from 1 to 4 o'clock. Wow. And uh, we'll be doing Godspell. So we're Super so, fun. so excited about that. And they can and sign up for all this stuff on the website? They can sign up for all of this if you just go to the Boys and Girls of Kern County, uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of Kern County website. There will be an icon, Stage Door Academy. You simply click on that icon, and it will take you to the registration. Man, yeah. super cool. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I think I might sign up myself. I'll see if I can just get a little shorter, maybe just fake the birth certificate a little bit. But, man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, we have more to show you here at the Boys and Girls Club because there's so much stuff going on. But we also know there's some math to do back in the studio. So back to you, Mike. There's always math to do here. Thank you, Scott. Scott. And thank you to Jill also. Speaking of Godspell, I do remember that, and I think John might remember this. Uh, I was uh, in New York at the ripe old age of 10 years old going to see Godspell for the first time, that musical right there. So uh, all the best to the Boys and Girls Club. That's coming up this summer, and we look forward to finding out how that all goes out. All right. In studio, we have Gavin, a fourth grade student from Loudoun Elementary. And also in studio, we have Mickey. And Mickey's pretty new to the, uh, well, he's been with Do the Math for a number of years, but he's recently new to On Air. So Mick, where do you work and what do you do? Uh, I work for the Panama Buena Vista Union School District. I teach fifth grade over at Williams Elementary School. All right. And have you been at Williams for a long time? Uh, this is my third year at Williams. All right. Good. Well, nice to have you on board and to have you on air. All right. So, Gavin, I understand that you have been working with mixed numbers in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. All right. So head on over to the board. You and Mick are going to start working on one that I think you're working on in class right now. So. Uh, you can go ahead and write this up there, or Mickey can. Let's go with seven and three fourths. And we will add two and three fourths. So, Gavin, go ahead and explain how you would solve this problem. If you need some help, Mickey's right there for you. So, I feel like you need to add the holes first. So, I will take the, the two down here, the seven right here. I'd probably draw it too close. So, oh my God. So, I'll draw seven. 
plus. Well, so that would equal nine. Okay, so we got nine from the whole numbers, right? Seven plus yep. two. So now what's left in your problem that you would need to still put together? I would still need to put the three fourths, and the three fourths and the three fourths. Okay, go ahead and set it up. How would you set that up? So I would put that down here. Fourths plus three fourths. I'll, I'm gonna try to put it somewhere far away. So I would first I would add the threes first because I know you don't have to change this bottom number because oh my god I'm a little. That's okay. Do you know? Did your teacher explain why the denominator doesn't change? I forgot. Oh. It's all good. So let me let me show you with the visual here on the side. So if I were to give you a pizza, right? My denominator tells me how many pieces do I need to split it into. Four, please. Four pieces, you're absolutely right. And the three in the numerator tells me you get to eat how many of those? Three? Of them? You get to eat three of them. You're a lucky guy. You get three fourths of a pizza here. All right. Now, would you say this represents three fourths? Yes. Three pieces out of four in total? Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to add another pizza that has four pieces. But you get three of them, because it's three-fourths also, correct? So the reason the denominator, that number on the bottom of the fraction, doesn't change, because it tells me what size these pieces are. This four tells me each of these pieces is one out of four that it needs to be a whole pizza. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so that's why the denominators don't change, because their sizes can't change. We simply add together the numerators, which represent how many pieces we have. So if you have three-fourths plus three-fourths, we know, no, the denominator doesn't change. What do the numerators equal, the three plus three? So the three plus three equals six. Three plus, and then just add the denominator and you got six-fourths. And then you bring this up here plus that equals nine and six fourths. All right, nice job. Now, has your teacher talked to you about improper fractions at all? Improper? Oh, isn't that the one where the, the, the de denominator is different from the, like they're two different denominators? So it's not necessarily two different denominators. I want you to look at nine and right, six fourths numbers. here. Whenever I have a numerator, that is larger than my denominator, we call that improper. Oh! Does that look familiar now? I know what it means. Now. Okay, go for it. So, delete this 9 and delete the 6. Plus, so if it's over 4, well, it takes 4 fourths to equal 1. Okay. And since it was at 6, 6 is above 4. So you have to add another whole, which would equal 10. And then you minus 4 minus, si four minus 6, that equals 2. So it's 10 and 2 fourths. There we go. Nicely done. Now there's one more step, though. Are you ready for it? Yep. You sure? Yep. All right, you got this. Here we go. You ever heard of simplifying? Mm, no. I so simplifying is when I notice that my fraction can be made into smaller representations, OK? So let me show you, right, we, we, we'll make another pizza here. We'll split it into four pieces, right, to represent the four, and then color in two for two-fourths. Would you agree with that? This represents two-fourths? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Does this represent the same amount of pizza? Yes. How would you, so we, we said this one over here is, oop, not three, I'm sorry. We said this one is two out of four pieces, correct? Mm-hmm. How would you describe the pizza on the right? What fraction would you use to describe this? Go ahead and draw it. I would use one. Do I, I feel like I'll put an eight. Well, let me ask you this. How many, pizza, how many pieces in that pizza are there? There is two pieces. So it's going to be one over two, two because there are two pieces oh, in total. I that's, that's kind of weird. That's not how I did it. 
it's kind of weird. There you go. So let me ask you this, oh. Gavin. Do, or does that represent the same amount of pizza? Yes, because if you do this, plus the same number, it equals two fourths. Close. You're on the right track. Remember, we don't add the twos together when we have fractions, right? Oh, yeah, you don't. That's okay. I'm so... So you're on the right track, though. But I just wanted you to see that two-fourths oh. can also be... I'll erase it for you. No worries. So I wanted you to notice that two-fourths can also become one-half. Oh. It represents the same amount of pizza. So when your teacher talks about simplest form, they're talking about how two-fourths can also be shown as one-half. And to get there, what if I divided two by two and four by two? Would that equal two divided by two equals one and four divided by two equals two? Yeah. Does that look familiar at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's something in fifth grade we do a lot of in order to make things have common denominators to add and subtract them. So instead of ten and two-fourths, what's another way we could write two-fourths after what we just learned? So I might as well just divide it. Yeah, divide by two. We're going to simplify by a factor of two. So I just put two? Yep. You're going to divide the top and bottom by two. That equals one. You're yep, right, yep, yeah. one over, yep. This equals two. Perfect, so then instead of 10 and 2 fourths, it's now 10 and? And? Nicely done, there you go, way to go. That is a great problem right there, because first of all, you took what you already knew, right? And then you had an improper fraction in that mixed number, which is something new that you dealt with, right? And then you had to simplify that, which is even something newer that you had to deal with. So you did a lot of different concepts in that one problem. So nicely done on that, Gavin. And since you're on a roll, let's do another one. All right? <laughs> Erase the board. Okay. Wait, can I just? You can just hit that. Right, there you go. That'll work. You got the whole thing. You got this uh, smart you, board down. He's That's ready to go. For anything. All right, here we go. All right, so Gavin, let's try this. So we added that time. Now we're going to subtract. All right? So, six and two-fifths. Okay. Oh, oh, my God. My a little screen. sideways there. We'll bring it around. And two. Two-fifths. Minus, let's see, you're in fourth grade, so let's make it four for the whole number. So, four and three-fifths. Three-fifths. So, now you're going to have to... Work on this one a little bit. So Mickey's there to help Ooh, you out. Yeah, Gavin, I'll tell you right out the bat. This is a fifth grade concept that I teach my students. So I want you to give it a shot and tell me what you think we should do, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, I think, I feel like we should uh, subtract the holes first. Okay. Or there's another thing. I only like doing this. I don't do it in, uh, like, when we plus it, but I like doing this when we have it. So I'll put... I think this, yeah, we do six and two fifths down here. And then, oh, I did not mean to do that. And then you draw another one and you put five and five fifths. Now explain, why are you making it five and five fifths? What does the extra five fifths do for you? So, it's five, okay. So five fifths is also equal to one, and one. Uh, well, not that. <laughs> I didn't mean to do. You're that. all right. You're good. I'm sorry. And plus five equals six. Gotcha. Now, so would you consider that regrouping? You're taking that whole unit and regrouping it into five fifths. Now, why are you doing that? What did you notice from this problem that you decided, hey, you know what, I need an extra five-fifths. What caused you to think about that? So I ha since I did that to, for I can break down the six into what I think is also equal to it. Okay. Now, Gavin, let me ask you this. If you have two-fifths of a pizza, I like pizza. That's why I keep talking about pizza. It's good for you. I love pizza. Right? Who doesn't love pizza? One, two, three... Four or five, right? You have two fifths. What's your favorite type of pizza? Mm, my favorite topping? Yeah. Pepperoni. All right, you have two fifths of a pepperoni pizza here, right? Your friend 
wants to borrow three-fifths. Do you have three-fifths to give to your friend? No. So that is why we're regrouping. Okay? Let me, let me do the rest. So I just got to delete this. So now I can add, I can drag this down right here. Perfect. And it will equal, I just put two fifths right here. Excellent. Then, oh, what? Probably missed, my fingers probably touched it. It's all good. The board likes it all. And that equals, so two plus seven equals seven. No, what, did I just say two plus seven? I think I got you. You're talking about two plus five? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that'll work. Keep going. So that equals seven. And since you don't change the denominator, you just do seven fifths. All right. Now, the only thing I'm going to tell you to remember is that whole number five. Don't forget this guy over here. So it's, instead, it's going to be five and seven fifths. Does that make sense? But this, then we add the fifth over here. Wait. You're on the right track. Let's kind of organize it a little bit here. So right. I'm going to... Yeah, that's not what I'm supposed to So let's pull this off for a little bit. No yeah. worries. You're so on the right track and I'm loving it. I feel... Yeah. I, I mark... That's what my teacher does. She marks this out and puts the five right there. Okay. So here's... What, so I'm just going to kind of organize this a little bit. So you have now... You still have a whole number five, right? I just noticed something. Go for it. Close. You're on the right I track. Don't we don't want to make it a mixed number first, and here's why: because we said we can't do two fifths minus three fifths, right? Mm -hmm. So by you regrouping, you now have five and, and seven, seven fifths. fifths. Even though it looks interesting, it looks like an, it is an improper fraction, right? Yeah. But it's okay to use when we subtract, because now can we do seven fifths minus three fifths? Yes. Yeah. So if you want, you can use mine and keep working off of that one. Totally okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So I go don't want to mess if I mess yours up. Oh, no worries. It's all good. So seven. And then now we can take away the four. The four from, no. Yeah. We could take, oh, we always going to take that. But now we put the one there. And now you're able to take the 7 from the 3, so that would equal. One right. or four fifths. Now, like we talked about earlier, two fourths could become one half because they both were divided, divisible by two, correct? Mm -hmm. Can four and five both be divided by something other than the number one to make them smaller? Uh, other? Two? Other than the number one. Can I, no, wait, two? Can you do four divided by two? Yeah. What about five divided by two? I don't know. If it can't, that's totally fine. So do you think they can be made any smaller, or is that as simple as it can be? I, that's a, I don't, yeah, you can't like do anything with the five. Yep. So your final answer would be what? One and four fifths. Absolutely. Nice job. Nicely done. Some great work right there, Gavin. I'm actually very impressed that without Mickey having to guide you, that you took the six and broke it into five and five-fifths on your own and then realized that you can take that and add it and make seven-fifths. So that's, that's very good for being in fourth grade at this point. Well, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. And for your great work so far this afternoon, Gavin, you've got yourself a meal courtesy of our friends at Broken Yoke. So congratulations on that. <laughs> And we do have another opportunity to go visit Scott. He's still out at the Boys and Girls Club. Now let's check out another program they've got out there. Scott. Welcome back. We are at the Boys and Girls Club. No better place to be in Bakersfield. It's an exciting place to be. I'm kind of fired up myself. I feel like a young kid again because there's so many things going on. Uh, brought another person in to make sure that we know exactly what's happening here, and especially this summer. Juanita, tell us a little bit about what's going on here currently and also what may be going on this summer because it sounds like you guys have some big plans. We do, actually. Um, currently, we are running our program from 7 to 6. We also have our meals program to where we're able to give not only our kids here meals, but we also have meals outside going out to the community. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm going to stop you real quick because I'm super curious. How does that work? People just kind of swing by and they pick Drive up some by. food? and. 
That's a heck of a deal. Because yeah. even in the pandemic or not, people have to eat, right? Yes, and some definitely. people are in a tough spot where they have not been able to have as much food in the cupboard as they want to do. Correct. Or we yeah. have working parents that don't have time to go home and, and make the food. So they just drive by, grab food for dinner, and then they head home with their kids. Nice. So you got the food program going on. Yes, what happens here in the building currently? So currently we have our, our hubs, our school hubs, to where we're able to help the kids, um, whether they're in school, whether they can't upload their homework or any of that sort, we're there to help them. Any questions that they have, I know it's hard for them to learn um, virtually. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard for the teachers to pay attention to all of their students virtually. So. It really is a challenge, I have to agree. As a teacher myself, I know it's, it's a challenge for the students. It always has been, right? But it's even more of a challenge now that we're virtual. Yes. But it is, you're right, it's absolutely it's a challenge for the teachers as well to make sure each student gets one-on-one. -on -one. And it sounds like some of that is what you do here to make sure the students know they're important mm -hmm. and what they're doing is important mm -hmm. and that there is a resource to help them do what they're asked to do right yes correct yeah man super cool so you have that going on currently um, what are some of the changes you've had to make in order to allow those things to happen currently because you know we have some you know health concerns here in the community <laughs> yes definitely um, we've had to hire more staff to sanitize every 30 minutes they go around and sanitize any the entire facility we have to change our uh, staff to kid member uh, ratio so it's less kids in the classrooms, just so that way we're able to social distance and make sure that we're paying attention to every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Wow, a lot of changes. Okay, so here's the really exciting part. What's coming up this summer? Because I'm sure there'll be some things happening here this summer, right? Yeah, of course. So this summer, um, we're going to try to make it as normal as possible. Um, still with our social distance, still with everything going on, we have to take our precautions. But we're going to continue to stay open from 7 to 6. We're going to run programs as uh, normal as possible. Yeah. And then we also have career launch that's going on as well that's for our teenagers that are able to get internships. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. That sounds really neat. Yeah, so we've been doing it in the past couple of years. And this year, of course, it's going to be different because we're having to do all these different changes. But there's a lot of STEM careers that we're trying to focus on as well. And the kids were able are going to be able to learn everything that they really actually need out in the real world. What the heck? It sounds like right up the alley, do the math. We yeah. might have to come back and check it out in the fall. That sounds really, really neat. Last question for you. If a young person wanted to be part of any of your programs mm -hmm. this coming summer, how would they go about signing up? They can visit our website, the bgclubsofkerncounty.org, or they can just have their parent or guardian give us a call, and we can let them know everything that's going on. Lots of different ways to get involved, mm -hmm. yeah. And so many more resources that we have to offer here. Whether you want to do some uh, musical stuff, you want to do some career stuff, Heck, you want to hang out with these really cool people here at the Boys and Girls Club. There's lots of stuff going on this summer. And we want to make sure that all those opportunities are available to all the young people. Gosh, just check out that website or give them a call. Anyway, at the moment, we know that there's more to do at the studio. So back to you, Mike. All right, thanks for that, Scott. Also, thank you to everybody at the Boys and Girls Club. As a matter of fact, we were speaking with uh, Jesse yesterday. The Boys and Girls Club of Kern County is the largest Boys and Girls Club in the entire United States. So there are a lot of students going through this program here in Kern County, and there are a lot of great programs that are being done with the Boys and Girls Club of Kern County. So uh, once again, that website will be up throughout the uh, interviews that we do with Scott and the Boys and Girls Club. You can always look into their summer programs and possibly beyond that. In studio, we have Gavin, a fourth grade student from Loudoun Elementary. And before we get Gavin working again, just a programming note, today, March 24th, 2021, this is the final day of live broadcasting for Do The Math This Season, our 20th season. And we will be back in September of 2021. But just for uh, kids that tune in a lot and they phone in and get some math homework help, today is the final day of live broadcasting this season. All right. Young man, you've been doing some awesome work with these fractions with like denominators. So you ready to move on to the next step? Yep. All right. Head on over to the board. Here we go. So let's go with... 3 fifths, so 3 over 5, plus 3 over 10. So this is something brand new for you. You can kind of talk about what you think might happen, and then Mickey's right there to help you out. Okay. So since they're uh, different, I'm, I'm going to, I think I might want to uh, make, I forgot what they're called, where it's like, like this. 
You're, you're going to find a common multiple? Yeah, common okay. multiple. Okay. I'm going to go all the way up to 50 if I can, because I don't want to take up the whole board. Well, let me ask you this. 30. When you have 5, can it become 10 somehow? Yeah, it only takes 2. Oh. So if you transform the 5 into a 10, can you match the other 10? Oh, it, it <laughs> went overboard, yeah. Right, so we could even stop at just 5 times what would turn that 5 in the denominator into a 10? I'm going to try them. Oh, it's called multiples. Yeah. So these are the multiples of 5. I'm going to do the multiples of 10. Okay. We'll have you pause there. Now again, multiples for a common denominator, we want both of these numbers to be able to become the same multiple. Do you see a number that's the same between 5 and 10? They're multiples. There's uh, 20, okay. 30, and also 10. Okay. Now, what I always tell my students is you want to make the work at the end of your problem as easy as possible. Remember on 2 fourths and 4 fifths, we thought about simplifying them back down? Mm -hmm. If you pick something large like 20 and 30, you potentially might have to simplify all the way back down again. So what I tell my students is you want to look for... It's the small. LCM, that stands for the least common multiple, as in the smallest. Ten. Ten, perfect. So looking at these, three-tenths already has a ten as a denominator, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we need to take three-fifths and turn that into a fraction with ten as a denominator. Okay. So... You're on the right track. So let me ask you this, because I like to ask questions and make sure you're going the right way. Here we go. How did you make that 5 on the left become the 10 down below? Well, it took 2, so... Explain, what do you mean it took 2? It took 2, five, two fifths to get to 10. So, so you had to multiply 5 times 2? Yeah. Oh, so up here, in order to make this work, you had to multiply by 2. I'm going, to you, I'm going to give you a secret. You ready? Mm -hmm. If you change the denominator by multiplying by 2, we have to also multiply the numerator by 2. I forgot. I forgot. Wait, I, wait can I just keep this the same? Because I just have to... Have you changed it? Uh-uh. It can stay the same. So, it, why does that look like times? So it is 6 plus 3. It, it, 6, six tenths plus 3 tenths. So I will add these. Wait, I actually don't have. Why am I doing this? I'm scared. It's all right. Your brain's working through it, and we love to see that. And I, ha I can keep this the same. All right. Now, is this an improper fraction, or is it a regular fraction? It's a regular. Do you think we need to simplify it and divide the 9 and the 10 by anything to make it smaller? Mm, I can do... Like, Is there anything they both could be divided by other than the number 1? You can divide 9 by 3, but I'm trying to think about something that can divide by to 10 by 3. So. Anything you can think of? No. That's yeah, so you know time. what? That is your final answer. 9, 10? That's it. Nicely done. All right. So erase the board. So now that I know you've got a little handle on this, let's move you up to the next step, young man. Might as well just. There you go. You got to the top of that board. That's good. Oh, my God. You know what? Use that little icon down at the bottom. I know. Get rid of the whole thing. It didn't, there it is. All right. it didn't work as well as I thought it would. All right, Gavin. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Okay. One over three. One over yeah, one, one over third. three. Oh, that's what you meant. Plus three over four plus. Oh, that's a five. Yeah, you, you can raise that if you want. So three over four plus, uh, let's go three over six. Over six. So now you've got three numbers to deal with at the bottom instead of just the two. So walk me through, what do you want to do to start this? 
I want to look at the multiples to see if there's anything equal that's, they're equal, that's equal to them. Okay. So, six. That is equal to that, but four, eight, 12, nine, 12. Oh, we have two matches so far. 12. So they all equal 12. Aha. Uh -huh. So what would you say is our common denominator that we can use to make all of these have the same denominator? Well, 12. They have 12. It, yeah, 12. I feel like it's more work when I do it like this. So. Oh, so close. I'm going to direct you back to that, the first yeah, I was going to say, that was lightning fraction. quick, but You were on it. You got the again. third one. So take a look at that first one. What did you notice? It actually took three to get to it. No. Uh, three times. Yeah. <laughs> You're the, on it. So it is. I did not mean to write it too. So wait. So it, it, it's. One times four, right? Well, did you have to multiply the three no. times four to get twelve? So you're on the right track. You're there. It's not. You, you're on it because you had to do three times four, right? That's where this four came from. Oh wait, I just noticed. Oh, that's wait. So that's this right. One Let's focus stick. on the first one first. You're all, you're you're right on the money. We're gonna make sure you get all of it. There you go. So it is four. Perfect. Now the second one. How do you get that 4 to become the 12? It took 3, so it would be... Wait, 3 times 3 is 9. Now what about the third one? Are you okay with 6 becoming yeah. 12 and 3 becoming 6? Yeah. I agree as well. Nicely done. Do we have common denominators now? Do they all have the same denominator of a 12? Yep. Are we allowed to add with common denominators? Yeah. Yeah, it's required, so go for it. So 4 plus 9, no, I'll just do the lowest numbers first. That would equal 10 plus 9 equals 19. Then I can bring this all the way up it's right here, put 19, put that 12. All right, is that your final answer? Mm, oh, no, it's not. Why not? What do you notice? It is over, like, this number is above 12, so it, it's not common, it's uh, improper. Okay. So I'll erase that because that's where the. So, just got to do a little math. All right, so talk me through where did the whole number one come from and the numerator of seven? So, since, so 19. And then. Wait, I'm just going to count up from 10. And since and since 19 above 12 by 7, so look. Three, four. No, wait, I'm just gonna do this part first. But uh, whatever. No, if it's higher than the denominator, mm -hmm. it equals w it's one. No, if it's the same number as like. So let's if it's say a twelve over it's a twelve, 12 it's twelve. Twelve. That's equal to one. Okay. And since nine, since nineteen's over twelve. We have to make a one, and how much how much numbers is nineteen above twelve? That's how you find out what what would be left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I totally agree. Awesome. Now I'm going to give you one hint for when you get to numbers that are a lot larger. Are you ready for it? Because let's say you have 300 over 12. Are you going to want to count from 12 all the way to 300 to figure out how much it's over? 
Uh-uh. It's a lot of counting, right? So here's one method we like to teach and help students figure that out a little more quickly. So if we have 19 over 12, every fraction is really a division problem. So this is the same as 19... Divided by 12. Exactly. So I can set this up as a long division problem. 19 divided by 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can 12 go into 1? 12, yeah. It can go into 1? Wait. I don't know. I would say yeah. no. 12 is a lot bigger than 1, right? I'm not that good at... That's all right. That's why we're long here. Long division. Now, can 12 go into 19? For example, what's 12 times 1? 12 times 1 is 12. It's 12. What's 12 times 2? 24. 24. Is 24 bigger than 19? Yes. Way bigger, right? So we're going to stick with 1. And you said 12 times 1 is 12, correct? Yep. So we subtract 12. And what do we have left if we do 19 minus 12? Well, 19 minus 12 is 7. Let me ask you this. Do you see a 1 like your whole number 1? Yeah. Do you see a 7 like the numerator you came up with? Yeah. And do you see a 12 like the denominator you had? Mm -hmm. So when you get to larger numbers, the counting may become a little more difficult because it requires a little more work. So as you get into larger numbers, we recommend using the division because you still get the same mixed number, but it's a little quicker as you get into larger numbers. But overall, nicely done. You got that question right. Rock on. I was going to say, perfect work right there, boys. Nicely done. You've learned quite a bit so far today, Gavin. Right now, we together are going to learn a little bit more about moons. Moons? We've all seen the moon in the sky, right? Although it may not look the same every night, it's Earth's one and only moon. But did you know that other planets have moons too? In fact, there are over 300 moons in our solar system. All the planets have moons orbiting them, except for Mercury and Venus. The inner planets have fewer moons orbiting them than the outer planets. Gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter have over 50 moons orbiting each one of them. As the astronomers use better and better telescopes and send out more space probes, they continue to find even more moons. And these moons come in all different sizes. Some moons are really huge, like Jupiter's moon Ganymede. This moon is so big that it's actually bigger than the planet Mercury. Other moons are really small, like Mars's moon Dimas. It's only 12 kilometers in diameter. Some moons, like Jupiter's Europa, are really interesting to scientists and researchers. Here's Dr. James Green, Director of Planetary Sciences at NASA, to tell us a little bit about Europa. But what's on the surface of Europa is ice. So what happened to the ice of Europa? And pull that Jupiter puts on Europa evaporated the ice away, and you're literally looking at what's left. But what it's doing in the inside is melting the ice. We now know there is more water on Europa than there is on this planet. Cool. I learned how small objects impact big objects in space and leave huge craters like those found on our moon. That's the same reason Saturn's moon Mimas has a huge crater on its surface. And look at all the craters on Jupiter's moon Callisto. Saturn's moon Titan has really made researchers curious. Here's Dr. Green again to tell us more. But with Cassini, these are the images we're bringing back. These regions, these dark regions we now know, are liquid. Titan is the only other object besides the Earth in our solar system that has liquid on its surface. And that liquid is not water, it is methane and ethane. It's a completely different world. And in fact, right now, today, it is raining methane in the southern hemisphere of Titan. It has a hydrological cycle, much like the Earth, of evaporation, condensation, rain. That cycle that we're so familiar with is going on right now in this moon, Titan. Rain on a moon? I thought that only happened on Earth. And what about Enceladus? I heard that's another really cool moon of Saturn. And when we look at Enceladus closely, we find in the southern hemisphere 
Huge geysers of water being poured out. Is that coming from an underground ocean? Is it coming from a lake? What is the process that does that? And is there potential for life even on this distant region, so, so very far away from the Earth? Wow, there might even be life on one of Saturn's moons. Who knew there could be rain, or volcanoes, or ice, or maybe even liquid water on these moons in our solar system? I think the moons are just as interesting as the planets are. Who knows what else we'll find out about them. Hey, don't get left behind. You can follow the NASA missions to other worlds by visiting NASA's solar system website. And the next time you look up at the night sky, just remember that some of the things you can see from our world does happen to be moons orbiting other planets. Always something to learn about our world and outside of our world as well. All right, in studio we have Gavin, a fourth grade student from Loudoun, and you're going to work on this project. You've got six clues. So go ahead and read through the clues. They're in no particular order. Okay, the red block is above the green block. So do I put it like Yeah, that? you can go ahead and put it together right now if you want to. Okay. There are two, ye two yellows, two blues, one green, and one red in the set of blocks. So does this really help with how to put any of it together? Uh-uh. All right, so I would say let's just kind of move that out of the way then. There are six blocks in all in a tower, six blocks high. There is a yellow block on top. Okay, so for right now, oh, I'm not that gonna works. I'm not going to put this on yet because we don't know what. We don't know if there's something else is. under it. Good point. All right, let's keep going. One of the yellows is above the green block, so... So if you put it there, is that above the green? Yeah. It is, right? It doesn't have to be directly above it. No, no. two blocks of the same color touch each other. Whoa. So you can't have the yellow and yellow on top of each other, and you can't each have the blue them. and blue touching. So like this, you can't have them like that. Right, you can't have that. Each of the blue blocks shares a face with the green block. So shares a face. Uh, and like this one, it share a face, right? That would share a face. Okay. And this one would go right here. I forgot. Okay. Take a look at this one again. Read this one. There are six blocks in all. And there are a tower of six blocks high. Six blocks high. There is a yellow block on top. <gasps> White. Now take a look at the other clues and see if this works next though. Oh. One of the yellow is above the green block. The other is below it. So do you have the other yellow below the green? Oh. You know this you need a yellow on top, but you need a yellow under the green also. So I could do this. Put it under. No two blocks of the same color touch each other. They're not. Each of the blue blocks shares a face with the green block. Well, that means the blues both have to be touching green. They're not touch. They're not gonna. They don't have to touch each other at least. So the blues have to touch the green. Okay. So let's review and see what you've got now. Right. So go ahead and go through them and make sure everything is good. The red block is above the green block. Yep. There are six blocks in all in a tower of six blocks. There is a yellow block on top. Mm -hmm. One of the yellows is above the green block. The other is below it. Mm -hmm. No two blocks of the same color touch each other. Yep. Good. So what we're going to do is hold on to that right there, and we're going to yeah. come back and check your final guess in just a moment. Right now, we're going to go back out to Scott at the Boys and Girls Club. Back to the Boys and Girls Club. No place better to be in town than this place. It's amazing. The activities that are going on and the people that are doing those things. So I brought another friend of mine, Chelsea, to tell us a little bit about what's going on. And Chelsea, first of all, tell us where we are mm -hmm. and what your role is in this room because this looks like my kind of room right here. This is the perfect yep. room to this be in. <laughs> yep. We're here in the kitchen. Okay. I am the nutrition coordinator here at the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. So I manage the program where we serve and create over 
Almost 4,000 meals on every single day. 4,000. A lot. Yeah, no doubt. Is that <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner type of deal? Breakfast, lunch, supper, snack. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you have quite a task. We do. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and how many people are coming through, how many young people are coming through to, to accept those meals each day? Um, it kind of varies because some days we have some kids of the same, I mean, it just kind of changes every single day. Yeah. Um, so I would say probably roughly about at least a thousand kids every single day. Wow. Now, is that different than the past before the pandemic started? Yeah, definitely. Much how, different. How different? Uh, before we were only creating about 700 to 900 meals a day. Okay. So it's over 3,000 meals more than we wow. were creating. Wow. So not only has this stuff changed, yeah. right? The mask yeah. and the distancing and the hand washing, I'm sure, and everything in here is sparkling clean. Not but the good. number of meals that you are cranking out each day has changed significantly. Your job has changed quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. I went from having about five staff to about 35 staff. So. With meals being served all day long, um, every single meal, we have changed our, even our um, capacity of where we even hold stuff. We rent a trailer from Giordano's and we store stuff outside in our garden. And yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now tell me where all these meals are served. Are they served right here from the Boys and Girls Club or throughout the community? They are dispersed throughout the community. Okay. Uh, so we have seven different serving sites. Mm -hmm. um, there are one here, one in our Stockton location, Subaru location, um, a couple in Lamont and some in um, Arvin as well. What the heck? They're all, <laughs> the Boys and Girls Club is everywhere. We're all over the place. We're all over the place. <laughs> wow. So what are the plans for the summertime? Will that continue all those meals every day? We're hoping so. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting kind of for um, guidance from the CDE as to how much we can still continue to do. Uh, but as long as we can do it, we'll do it. So we will continue to go hopefully all summer long doing as many meals. If not, we will still do at least two meals a day rather right. than the four meals. So right. depending on what we're allowed to do, we'll continue to do. Man, what a valuable resource for yeah. young people. Are there any requirements for young people to come and get a meal from you? Luckily, the CDE has made it very easy for people to come get their meals. Um, kids don't even have to come. Parents can come um, and pick up their meals. And then they just have to tell us their kids' names, the school that they attend, and the age of their children. Gotcha. So yeah. really, it's open to any and all. Uh, under the age of 18. Them. Right, Correct. right. So if things stay as they are, and we head into the summertime, and even though school is out officially for lots of students, they can still pick up meals yes. at your distribution location. Yes, of course. We want okay, to feed so them. So really quick, kids. just because I'm curious, yeah. what's on the menu? Today? What are you serving? <laughs> yeah, today. What's going on today? What do we got today? Today we're doing a cheesy chicken burrito okay. as one of our meals. Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is one of our meals. Good. Uh, cereal for breakfast, and then some um, little snacks, just like graham, graham crackers or something along those lines with some fruit and applesauce and all that fun stuff. Oh, you gotta make sure there's a, there's a collection yeah, in there. Carrots Absolutely. and veggies and fruits and everything. Yeah, what's the most smells. popular dish here? The peanut uh, butter and jelly, right? Sometimes the peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> but actually they like tamales a lot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, gotcha. tamales are a big hit. There you go. Yeah. All right, well, we'll have to see if we can make you up a request box. So yeah, just in case definitely. there's some more things that you don't serve that we can get in here. Gosh, what an amazing place. The resources here are boundless. We have all kinds of things and people that are willing to serve the community. And what I uh, can't think of a better place to do that than here at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, been so wonderful to chat with each individual person here, but I, and I know there's even more going on. We only have so much time though, and I know there's more math to do back at the studio. So at the moment, we will head back there. Back to you, Mike. All right, thanks for that, Scott. Gavin, did you get the solution? Yep. You did indeed. So the first time you went through all of it, checked it, you got it. So nicely done. Did you have some fun today? Yeah. Good. I'm glad you did. We were happy to have you on station with us today. And you know what? Today, once again, thank you for a wonderful 20th season. Do the Math is finished with 2020, 2021. We'll be back in September. Until we meet again, continue to do the math. support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company.
with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.